Hi, it's Larry here, Xbox's major. What are you guys laughing at? Hold on a minute. We're laughing at you. We're starting the show here, and I, I can't I'm even sorry. get I can't even get going. All right, well, you know we're gonna go with it. Hey, welcome <laughs> to the official Xbox podcast. My name is Larry here, Xbox's major Nelson, and uh, oh. over over here is Jeff. Over there is Rebecca, and they were usually I bring them in, but they were giggling at me as I was starting. So I figured, all right, we'll start the show. That you've way. had a mess today, Larry. Your lighting <laughs> wasn't working. I know. Your hair is. Kafuff, it's I all know. I gotta get I a didn't haircut. I wasn't gonna say anything about the hair, but that was kind of what I was giggling at just that, and then the straight face that <laughs> three, two, one. <laughs> so. Sorry. <laughs> well, that's all right. They get to see a little bit of something. It's a, uh, it's. I actually, you know, I, I checked. I'm getting a haircut Friday. Um, and I, yeah. It, thank you for reminding me. It's this. It's thank kind of, goodness. It's I'm just kidding. I'm sorry. It's yes. poofy. <laughs> this is what happens. Last week we're in person. You had hair and makeup. You had the whole thing. Yep. And you know, and I, I thought it went really well. And oh, last the live show we did. Yeah, we were all together. Yes. For those of you that missed it, you can see it in your in your in your podcast feed. That show was. Recorded live uh, in in one of our studios on campus. It's the first time that Jeff and I and Rebecca have been together in the same time. Jeff and I have done lots of things live together, but Rebecca, that's the first time you've been able to join us live, and that's it was awesome. Thank you for coming out from New York. Yeah, it was great. I yeah, I mean, we've like the three of us have hung out quite a bit, but it was the first time doing the show live together, and it was yeah. my first time. Well, I guess I've seen you guys kind of sporadically through the pandemic here and there, right, but, but not um, not like but, this this live scenario where we we're not talking on top of each other. Oh, wait a minute, you go. No, you go. No, you. <laughs> So. I know. I was saying afterward, I felt like we were able to talk so fast because there wasn't like the lag and then the kind of awkward oh oh with <laughs> going remote. But it was it was really cool. Yeah, I liked it. It, it was it was fun. We're gonna do we're gonna do those live us shows. You did, which yeah. was great. Well, <laughs> what was no? That's that's. that's. Now, I, I, that's like a cliche Zoom call type of situation. Oh yeah, muting. I'm like, muting. I'm muting. I'm muting. I'm unmuted. Yes, yes. happened. Yes, there was no. Anyway. Have you noticed, by I, the way, I, can I can I share with you a little something I don't think you guys have noticed? Um, so as you as as and as you guys know, we work at Xbox and and we have Teams calls, which are for those of you, it's it's you know, it's Microsoft's um, collaboration platform. It's like Zoom. It's got video calls and chat and it's like Zoom and slide, all these things. Anyway, you and I, Jeff and I and Rebecca and the rest of a lot of people are in Teams calls every day. Well, I noticed I have a build of Teams because I'm on this early early program internally at Microsoft. Where as people are speaking, I can spotlight them. So I'll pull them in the oh, spot. Yeah. So I've basically been producing all of our team meetings lately. Nobody's ever noticed. I'm like, you're going to spotlight you and bring them full screen and bring them full That's screen. That's so, so funny. So nobody noticed yet. Shh, while well, they Good know now. production sort of blends into the background. Right. You know, and then, yeah, then there wow. are other meetings. Like, why is this so not... The speaker just seems so distant from me. Yes. You know, I'm not, a, I'm not connecting with them. Yeah, you know, I want why. a Larry... You're like the, you know, you're a visionary. I, I, I'm kind of like the Kristoff of, do you remember from, yes. uh, from, from, you're uh, a cinematographer, your team cinematographer. <laughs> are you going to, but the, the question is, are you going to play it, like use it as a joke and spotlight people who are just kind of not paying attention in the background or someone who's going to get their coffee or anything no, like I, that? No, I didn't want to do that. Um, I didn't want to do mm -hmm. that. I was, like I say, it was very subtle. It was kind of like, like I just said, it was like Kristoff in the Truman Show. Remember? Ed Harris, like, we're going to do this now. And I, so I try to just kind of make it very natural. It's your own That's reality so TV show. Is what uh, it is. I gotta have some fun. So anyway, so we have some. I fun like it. I'm gonna. I'll keep an eye out for that in the team meeting tomorrow. <laughs> exactly. We, <laughs> we have to, so we'll we have to spotlight Larry like all the time. <laughs> no, you could, I, I, could, I, has, you could grief someone in a Teams meeting that way. Mm -hmm. Challenge accepted. <laughs> Challenge accepted. Anyway, I have to. We're gonna get to what we're playing. Why don't we do it now? Because <laughs> I, I want to share. Remind me to share this little booklet. Um, cause this has a story behind it. So, um, I'm not going to show the other side, but, um, we're playing, uh, let's, let's start with Rebecca. You've been traveling, so you probably haven't had a lot of chance to play things. Have you? Yeah, I haven't. Um, I got back to New York. I had, cause I was actually away for uh, about two weeks. So I got back to New York. I had a bunch of packages. One of them, uh, included this hoodie, which I'm wearing now. It's very comfy. Yeah, what is, what is that uh, hoodie? I noticed like a little, little YouTube logo, a little Minecraft action. I mean, do you want to turn around? Yeah. So yeah. Oh, wait. oh yeah. One, one trillion Minecraft. Games. <laughs> so that, that of yeah. course is to support the streams you guys had or the announcement you had a few weeks ago, right? Ooh. 
Yeah, we actually announced it in um, December, around the end of the year, that Minecraft had passed oh, met many one trillion ago. views. <laughs> yeah, I know. I mean, what January kind of flew by, but yeah. So we announced that Minecraft had passed one trillion views on YouTube, which is we're the first uh, game, but then also like community to do so, which is pretty cool. Uh, I also have you can see in the back if you go full screen, there's like a little cube, a little block that I have. Oh, I can see. In the, oh, wrong oh, there. There. On the windowsill? <laughs> yeah, it says one trillion views. It's like a nice paperweight. So I uh, I keep, I'm trying to like not did you get, get like, too did much Did you get stuff. like a platinum, one of those platinum YouTube things, you know, that all the YouTubers the play have? Button. <laughs> yeah, the play button. Did you no, get one of those? <laughs> I wish. Yeah, no, I just got a little paperweight block <laughs> instead. But um, yeah, I keep I keep joking that I'm trying not to like accumulate too much stuff because I don't know how long I'm going to live in New York versus moving back to Seattle or the West Coast. But or I anywhere keep getting else. Cool, <laughs> I know I keep getting cool things though. So I'm like, oh, I'm going to hold on to this. But um, yeah, so I haven't I haven't really had the chance to play anything lately. Uh, kind of been catching up on some TV that I missed with my roommate and uh, seeing friends now that I'm back in town. But we have a three day weekend ahead. So I'm, uh, I'm actually really curious to hear what's coming out on game pass this yeah, three week, day weekend here in the stuff. united states is uh is president's day which is a big deal that'll be monday so we'll all be off on monday and doing our things and so look i don't know what i don't know what you're going to do for president's day but enjoy your day off <laughs> it's uh, like how do we honor games? the president uh, <laughs> yes <laughs> Um, yeah, but we've had we've been busy this week with uh, some some news, and we're going to talk a lot about the news later on. But Jeff, I know that you're playing some some things that are new and some maybe some familiar titles. Oh yes, uh, so I'm sure you've almost certainly seen the news this week that Cyberpunk 2077 received its next gen patch. For some reason, I just flipped over onto myself. <laughs> that was no. Uh, Why did you have to say yeah. that? Was a nice transition. Thank you. Look at that. I had to call it out because it's 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 a <laughs> Price is Right. It's a Price is Right transition. So uh, yeah, I, I I looked the last time I'd played the game. I played about twenty ish hours of the game, and right. once I knew uh, last year. So I think November. Or I'm sorry, January twenty something was the last time I played. And I knew that I was going to wait for this patch. And there was a, I, so I played the first couple of missions and then there's like uh, almost a meme. <laughs> These animations, Larry, there's almost a Just meme of like, uh, there's a guy named uh, Takamura that's waiting for you at the diner. And Takamura waited for me at the diner for well over a year. I hope mm -hmm. the food was good. And uh, last night after taking the update, I joined him. You went to the diner? Back in. I went to the diner. Excellent. We chatted. I, and I got a feel for it. It took a little bit of time. I mean, because it's it's FPS controls for the most part, the, at least that muscle memory comes right back. There were a few things in terms well, of your built. Well, if you haven't played in a while, they reset all of your, or they give you back like a respec. And I had like 30 sort of like points to, to allocate into my skill trees. And if you recall, skill tree is like it's a skill web really yeah uh, just, there's so many different elements huge. of it they've actually reconfigured a number of them and i thought about it, i was like you know i want to coming back i might want to handle my character differently i'm going to go full-on hacker hacker nerd and um and so i reallocated them all and i had to remember how to play the hacking mini game and everything after about i would say 30 45 minutes though i was back into it i ran a couple of side missions and now i'm advancing the story it's running at 60 FPS. It looks better. It feels better to nice. me. Uh, and I'm just enjoying it more. I'm just enjoying it. And so I love that for me, it was something that I'd kind of put to the side and forgotten about. And I'm thinking about things like Elden Ring coming out next week and all these other games. But now I've got something that I'm like excited about like here and now that it's sort of resuscitated. And uh, I expect that I'm going to play this game all the way through and, and enjoy the story. So um, I'm really... Maybe it's, you know, it's the way we wanted to experience it all along, but you know what? We get to do it now and um, I'm glad for that. So uh, kudos yeah. to sticking with it to uh, the folks at CD Projekt Red and, uh, I, you know, I'm going to keep talking about it, I'm sure. Oh, it <laughs> Better late than never. <laughs> yeah, I, I was actually, you know, Jeff, I, I booted it up when it came out. In fact, here's, here's my data syncing right now. Uh, and I was going through it and it was... I think, I think I'm in my apartment at this point, but I have to tell you, it was um, it was a little rough because I, I, I spawned in and I don't remember what mission I'm on. I actually, I think I'm going to start over. I think I'm just because I'm that, not... Totally understandable. Yeah, I'm not yeah. that far in. And I, you know, I was standing there and I spawned in, in this middle of this wet street. I don't know where I am. 
and I'm starting to, you know, I'm trying to figure out my weapons. I'm throwing a grenade into a crowd of people. The police show up. It is just, it's pure mayhem. I jump into a police car. I, I, it was not good. So I got, I think I'm just going to re-roll my character and just start all over again. You know what you have now is you've got like a year and change um, of strategy guides and, yeah. and content. So I ended up going to uh, Fextra Life. Uh, we work with, uh, they're just some great creators there. The doing a lot of Lost Ark right now, but they've put together all kinds of guides. And I went through and I spent like a half an hour just looking at, oh, what do I want my character to be? And they made suggestions on, on, on you know, ev- everything like that. And uh, yeah, and now I'm back into it. I'm a hacker. I mean, I gotta, I gotta figure out just the menu structure stuff. for everything. I mean, it's just, it's so... I they did. Out. It's definitely been tweaked, but I like, I'm, I'm telling you, just give it, give it like 30, 45 minutes and, yep. and, it, and, I'll be right it, and back it came in. right back to me. And okay. now I'm like, that's all I'm thinking about right now, which it's great to have oh. that back. Okay. That's good. That's fun. Yeah. That's fun. Uh, a couple other things I just wanted to call out real quick because I was not traveling and I did nothing but play video games over the, <laughs> basically since the last show. Uh, King of Fighters 15 is out. Uh, I remember like the first King of Fighters back in like, 94 it was an offshoot of fatal fury i want to say and yep. now there's 15 there's tons of characters there's there's so much of it so i was getting back into that it's nice to play a 2d fighting game and uh the controls felt like really um tight to me so uh next time i've got like a friend over who's into fighting games i've uh is your brother probably be in the next couple of weeks i will kick my brother's ass but there's okay. a, a friend of mine who works for, for turn 10 and and him and i are pretty evenly matched he's got a street fighting machine at home and you know like one of the mini arcade kits and so once this uh once he comes over it'll be fun to just sort of sit down there and just play verses for you know a couple well, hours and in full disclosure i'm going to give you a little little insight of how the show works we are recording the show now but later today after the show hopefully if all goes well rebecca you're going to have an interview with that team so <laughs> if, if the interview is not here then something happened and we weren't able to do it but if all everything lines up you're going to do that right oh is that tonight i just <laughs> oh yeah <laughs> well there we go just to add a little bit more layer of complexity so all right thank you last game i want to mention real yes. quick um, and you played this larry right sable did you end up playing yeah. that? Yeah. Oh, I so played I finally, it too, yeah. With my speeder? Oh, great. Yes. <laughs> so it had been on my sort of stack of shame. My virtual stack of shame is my pinned list. When I look on there, I just pin games that I know <laughs> I want to play. Sometimes they stay there for a long time. And they sort of remind me every time I go down. Oh, oh yeah. I said I was going to play that. And instead, I jumped back into Halo or something. But um, yeah, this weekend I got back in, into, I started over Sable. And um it's really good. The soundtrack's great. And once I got like a feel for what soundtrack. it is and everything. You did that interview and, and earlier this year, really right, good. Rebecca? You did that interview. Yes, yeah, that was I a, did. Go back and listen to that interview if you want to. But that's also a fun game to get into. So it's so on Xbox Game Pass. Uh, it, it, I was getting some like Mandalorian vibes. Like you're on like, you yeah. know, you're riding a speeder <laughs> through. Or you're like one of the sand people almost. Yeah. Or the yeah. Tuscan Raider. Tuscan Raider. You're almost a Tuscan, except no combat. Much more visually, yeah, visually yeah. pleasing than a Tuscan Raider, <laughs> and yes. audibly. Uh, l- less uh, shooting, uh, less uh, disrupting spice running things. That's fine. Uh, <laughs> but it's all about puzzle solving and atmosphere, and I, I thought it was really, really cool. I, um, I've i been playing a little bit, you know, Cyberpunk, top, still playing a little bit of Halo. Uh, that's kind of a meeting point. Oh, Paparazzi. <laughs> Go on. Oh, that's right. I want to try that one. Yeah. Which is basically, as the name, as you can puzzle out from the name, you uh, walk around and take pictures of puppies. So it's because you can do cloud streaming. I didn't have to do the install. I was streaming it. I would also. I feel like, Jeb, you can imagine what I'm going to. It's like basically what I want to do in real life anyway. <laughs> uh, and so I've been playing that. Uh, Paparazzi did that over uh, streaming up from the cloud. Uh, Ali Ali World, been playing that. You know, we talked about that oh, yeah, last yeah. week. So I've been playing a little bit of that, getting my Ali Ali on. That's, you know, that's that's kind of what I've been doing, I guess, for the most part. But I wanted to bring get, uh, go, get back to this. Oh, yes. this? Sorry, we we forgot. So, so you <laughs> about your mystery book. So, yeah. so Rebecca, I, a couple of weeks ago, when Jeff and I were at our, uh, you know, on our own, and we ended up hosting a show, we had a rather interesting conversation about. Oh yes, okay. Quantum computing. So, a friend of mine who works at, at on, on our quantum computing team, Microsoft, sent me this little book, 
And inside the book, it's basically baby's first guide to quantum computing. <laughs> and it goes through and explains to you, the because Jeff and I were like, we don't know what it is. And so it goes through and explains all the different parts of quantum computing and what it is. And it's it's an amazing, I, cool. I don't think this book is available uh, publicly. If it isn't, it should be. Because it just talks about how we're going to solve the problems and all. Anyway, it's 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 quite good. So I'm 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 so reading. Is up there on. a page on there about how we're going to be the world's first quantum powered podcast? Well, it's I, you kind of you kind of blew my 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 uh, headline there, Jeff. I'm working on it because, <laughs> but I'm just trying to figure out what that means. Just going through the guide because hold on, I'm, I'm I'm rapidly going through the guide trying to find out. Um, uh, it's an index podcasting PP. But quantum oh, computing behaves more like nature. Is there a page on Alan Turing in there? Uh, no, this is very high level. It just it talks about qubits. Qubits? Isn't Cub- that like isn't that like the size of a horse or something? Well, it's it's actually when you know computers use. <laughs> No, no, that's, 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 that's is that like an ancient. I think it's like an ancient like <laughs> measurement, you know, like furlongs and I don't know. No. Anyway, just, so let me, I I'll read to you that. this, if I may. Just like classic Please. classical computers, quantum computers use ones and zeros, but in the form of quantum bits, a.k.a. qubits. Oh, Q-U. Oh, it's spelled with a Q. Yeah, qubits. Rather than processing information in an orderly march, qubits behave more naturally like a powerful ocean wave. Anyway. Okay. So I looked up qubit, C-U-B-I-T. Yeah, don't look at that. It's an ancient measure of length approximately equal to the length of a forearm. It was between 18 inches and 21 inches. And I was like, what does this have to do with... This the secret to quantum podcasting. It's right here in the forearm. We're and Jeff, and just, just to let you guys know, Jeff will be uh, is also moonlighting as the editor for Wordle on New York Times. So. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Qubit would fit. If that's the word today, I'm sorry for spoiling. I haven't done it yet. It's not. Don't worry. Uh, okay. <laughs> anyway, that would be a good one. Quantum computer. I, I, you know, I was thinking. I was thinking of what you just said earlier. So that's that's quantum computing. I was thinking of what you said earlier, Rebecca, about random things. You have that cool t-shirt and i ended up getting this jeff did you go into the office we're moving offices and there's all these other teams are cleaning stuff whatever out it getting... is i don't have it so yeah, this go. is this is a pack of microsoft socks <laughs> i want some of those i Look would at... love that, that oh cool? my gosh so, those are really where did cute. you get those they were they were as you walked in they were right at the um look at that what i was there that day dang it i want a pair of those socks yeah so i've, I've got well, well, I you got to share I've you got to give some out. You got to give some away too. I've got a bag. Of I'm them signing there. you up so, okay. to give some Microsoft <laughs> socks. There was a whole. There was a whole <laughs> thing in there. Free code Friday should involve socks. This man, week. I went into the office and all that I got was a new docking station and a 12 month Game Pass subscription card that Blaine had left behind. That's, <laughs> I mean, that's, <laughs> okay, that's pretty good deal too. He wasn't taking but it. Can you wear it? Will it keep your feet warm? You know, is it and, stylish? Those are stylish. I would wear those. Um, I would I'll, wear those I'll get you a pair. Anyway, uh, that's – oh, man. So, yeah, we're moving offices. We're kind of – you know, I, don't, I, I know this kind of went public, Jeff and Rebecca, but we're going – we're headed back to the office in about a month-ish. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Exciting yeah. stuff. Yeah. Well, when, and for us, for Jeff and I, it'll be – I think we haven't – we you and I haven't talked about this. this is the first time. You know, we have to find that day that we're going to go in together so at least we can go to lunch together, right? Well, yeah, it was great because after the show last week, we got to have teriyaki together. And teriyaki all of is us. Like, yeah. all over Seattle. There's yeah, just teriyaki nice. restaurants. And it was it was a good one. Had my yakisoba. It was yeah. very good. It, it was mm-hmm. like, but I mean, I'm from a really small town. And Did so you? it was it was like five dollars more for my plate of teriyaki <laughs> in Big the Red City Washington teriyaki. Area. Um, no, like, Rebecca, city Rebecca, prices? I, yes, I was yes, from sorry. a small town in Connecticut. We didn't have teriyaki. So. <laughs> okay, that's fair. I mean, yeah, it, it was really nice. Yeah, it was, it, was, oh, it, was, it was fun to see. But yeah, we're going to figure out what that what our new in-office rhythm looks like. Because I think we're only going to be there like once or twice a week. Isn't that what we signed up for, Jeff? Will we do the show from there? Like, how, what do you think? Maybe. I don't know. Maybe. You know, it'd be great is if we sit there, we're there, and then there's like a big TV or we lower Rebecca. Well, that's so that's if you go back and look at last week's show, if you noticed, but I was sitting kind of uh, off to the right and it was uh you and you and Rebecca were sitting off to the left. If you look at the screen, in the middle there was a monitor and I was over there talking to the 
to the team yesterday about taking Rebecca, taking you and putting you in that monitor, like, you know, like standard, like the, you know, so you'd be with us in studio. So we are, we are working on something like that. That's pretty cool. You're saying that a hologram is out of the question. though. Not yet. Well, you know what? Let's get our qubits okay. going. Quantum <laughs> computing. <laughs> Let's get our qubits going. Oh, it all comes back to that. Um, anyway, so yeah, so that's uh, that's kind of what noon. You guys have had a pretty good week. I'm glad to have you back there. We should probably uh, break and get into the interviews now. Hopefully, the interviews are. Uh, you know, I know Jeff's got one. Got a couple going on here. We're going to talk to Jeff's going to talk to Andy Hall, who's the principal writer for Total Warhammer Total War Warhammer Three. You're going to learn all about that, and then if all goes well. You're going to have Rebecca <laughs> talking to Josh Weatherford, who's the assistant producer for the King of Fighters 9. 15. 15. Oh, yeah. XV. XV. 15. I don't know. <laughs> Thank you, Jeff. We just had the Super Bowl, and you don't know your Roman. <sighs> Go to the interview. Yeah. Let's go to the interviews. From Shogun to Rome to Warhammer, the Total War series has consistently been one of the great grand strategy games available to play on PC for about two decades. Now, fresh off a spate of rave reviews, Total War Warhammer 3 is now available as part of PC Game Pass. I expect you to start downloading right now during this interview, and you can play it when it's over. So here to tell us more is Andy Hall, the principal writer at the developer Creator Creative Assembly. And uh, happy to have you here, Andy. How excited are you to bring the world of Total War Warhammer to, to like new fans through Xbox Game Pass? Well, we're really excited. Uh, it may be the third game in the trilogy, but actually it's a great stepping on point. Uh, and Game Pass allows us to reach loads of people who probably never even considered whether they, they want to be a demon prince or, or a, a transforming uh, cafe and dragon. So, but here is the chance. And, and we've got like a, a prologue system. Uh, it's, a, it's a mini campaign that takes the player into the story. So hopefully the narrative keeps them compelled and, and introduces all those dense, complex Total War systems that, that gives Total War that depth of gameplay. That that prologue, I've been reading some great stuff that, by the way, congratulations on just fantastic reviews uh, this week. Um, and the prologue Thank was you. really mentioned a number of times by, uh, uh, you know, reviewers as being just a great onboarding. Can you just like sort of talk about... Um, I, you know, how that came together, both as a way to, you know, teach new players how to play, but also to establish the lore and the story in 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 the game. Yeah, I, I mean, it was something we wanted to do. We, I mean, the, the, the trilogy itself getting a bit long in the tooth. I mean, we, 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 uh, we released Warhammer 1 in 2016, I believe. Um, uh, and all that time, our player base has been growing. And, and we realized that, you know, people that want to come on, uh, what would be their stepping stone into this world, and 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 so we created this this prologue specifically for for that, and we also thought it was a great way to to, to introduce these narrative elements. We were going very hard with the narrative in Warhammer Three. Um, it, the narrative itself does a lot of heavy lifting in the campaign. It's got, it, you know, there's a there's a bear god, and it's and it's been it's been shot and injured. How do you shoot a bear god? Um, all that and all that information is in the is in the prologue, um, and that's created this great maelstrom around the realm of chaos, um, which will allow players to enter enter this version of Warhammer Hell. But how did that all come to be? So. That allows us, uh, the prologue allows us to tell that story, but also uh, allows players to, to, to kind of, and not just new players as well, maybe the, there's players there who haven't played Total War in a good few years. It's a great refresher course uh, as well. And, and hopefully that, that narrative's compelling. It stars um, Prince Yuri, who starts, starts that's a slight spoiler, uh, he starts as this honourable prince uh, going sent to, to, to find Urson, the Lost Bear God, and um, as the story unfolds and, and the player gets to learn the, the, these mechanics, uh, you'll, you'll discover that the lure of chaos is, is, a, is a pretty strong one in the Warhammer world. So you mentioned, uh, you know, maybe laps players, players who may not have played, I don't know, since 2016. Or, and of course, I, I, I imagine you're going to reach a lot of new folks here in, uh, you know, Warhammer 3 being on PC Game Pass. As an entry point, uh, after they've played through 
the prologue, they maybe even through the story, what would be one or two of the recommended factions would you say uh, you would suggest that that folks start off with? Well, if they want to carry that through line of the story, uh, the Demon Prince is, is a great place to go after that uh, for reasons that will be pretty obvious once you once you play the prologue. Um, but it's also a, a fantastic place to start because it, it's something that's kind of, again, it's brand new to Total War and that we have this... Um, this almost build a demon workshop uh, <laughs> creation here. So it's great for role players as well, not just strategy gamers where y- you can create your own demon as, as that prologue possesses. You can choose its wings. You can choose it, its weapon systems. Um, and as, as you get further in the campaign, you can choose which God you, which of the chaos gods you want to dedicate yourself to. And there is literally billions and billions of different combinations. So it's a great way for the player to also kind of enjoy a power fantasy and imprint themselves on, on, onto the onto the world of Warhammer as well and, and role play in that aspect rather than just taking one of kind of the famous Warhammer celebrities uh, and, and playing their campaign, which is a total viable way of playing this game. And you can certainly do that. We've got some great well-known kind of demon demon characters from the world of Warhammer uh, as well as uh, uh, as brand new cafe and dragons, the storm dragon and the iron dragon. And even, players like Greece's Goldtooth, uh, the Ogre Over Tyrant, if you if you get the game early on and, and get that uh, pre-order DLC. Sounds like there's so many different directions that you can go to. I, I know there's also a lot of new mechanics. And if you uh, uh, coming to Warhammer 3, I've been hearing about, uh, uh, it's not just all battle, there's diplomacy, and that can vastly alter, you know, how, how things play out for you. So um, do you mind uh, just sort of talking about some of the new gameplay mechanics as well? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. Uh, Diplomacy is a good one to start because uh, we've kind of streamlined it uh, where where possible. So you can make quick deals now rather than kind of trying to guess whether you need to bribe someone and and trying to constantly guess that number. You know, you can press a a quick deal and it'll instantly give you like those available deals. So you can make those deals and get on get on with the game but you know if you if you want to stay in diplomacy there's there's also loads of stuff to do there's there's a whole kind of outpost system uh that uses kind of a, a an in-game currency called allegiance and 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 that though allows you if you get an alliance with 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 a, a friendly faction you can build an outpost in their settlement and as that outpost grows you're allowed to to bring in their units into your into your faction um so so uh Total War Warhammer's always kind of thrived in this asynchronous design. Um, but now there's a way to kind of plug those gaps in your armies. So if you if you want those dwarf cannons, uh, get friendly with the dwarfs and in time they'll give you some some of the they'll lend you some of their cannons, which it, which is a great and a whole new kind of vector for the player to player to explore. Um, and so, and that's just that's just in diplomacy. Um, but I think for me, the, the the big kind of almost escalation, the step up is uh, is in multiplayer. You know, we've really kind of gone to town in Warhammer Three and, and focused a lot of resource into into our multiplayer system. So so now you can there's up to eight players can play the same campaign at once. So you get your friends over. You know, all, all those Game Pass members get in join up uh, and and play eight players simultaneous turn as well uh, multi so there's, so there's no downtime uh, and we've even created some custom scenarios so it, um something like uh, we've got one called something rotten in kisler for example which is for three players so you get three players together in an evening and you can try and free kisler from the throes of chaos in an evening all playing simultaneously and when one of your one of the players goes into battle, he can give the other player some of their units. So maybe you want to micro some cavalry so you'd be able to do that. So again, e- even if you're slightly intimidated by these big armies, um, y- you know, you can get a friend and he can give you one or two units and you can just play the battle with one or two units and uh, hopefully have a great time. Yeah, some of the best games. It's, it's, it's good to go through with that, you know, a Sherpa, if you will, that will, will guide you through. Who's been there before and has done that. So, um, I, you know, yeah. as the writer, uh, principal writer at Creative Assembly, like, I have to imagine um, you've developed maybe a, a favorite unit, a, a favorite lord or hero or something like that. Who's, who's, 
who are you just like most proud of or something you you know you really want to make sure that people notice uh because you put your heart into it uh just maybe a little bit more than everything else oh there's so, there's so many uh i mean prince yuri in the prologue um he's he's kind of, i've been on his journey with him so so um his ultimate uh, destination still hurts when I when I see that again. Slight spoilers there, uh, but I think Miao Ying, the Storm Dragon, uh, is 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 really interesting. Uh, I, I mean, from the human condition point of view, you know, she's the eldest daughter. There's a lot of responsibility. She has to defend the Great Bastion, which is this gigantic war across Northern Cafe. So there's a lot of responsibility falls on her so- shoulders, and, and and I kind of like. Um, like that that she feels that pressure and she, she she's the eldest daughter and the other kind of dragon dragon siblings kind of uh, are waiting for her to muck up so they can bounce I, you know i've kind of been there when i was younger <laughs> not not defending a giant mythical war but as, as an older brother um, metaphorically you know, <laughs> yes but certainly metaphorically not literally <laughs> Oh, that it's all, it just sounds like there's so much here and I've been getting really excited. I, I like, I think a lot of folks very new to the, the world of, of total war Warhammer. Uh, and thanks to game pass, uh, if you started downloading when I told you to, you should be getting pretty close, but in the meantime, uh, you can check out over on Xbox Wire. We've got features on the achievements uh, for Total War Warhammer 3, as well as hotkeys, the all-important things you're going to want to learn so that you can you know, be as efficient as you can out there on the battlefield. Andy Hall, I want to thank you very much for joining us, and uh, congratulations on the launch of Total War Warhammer 3. Thank you very much. We can't wait for players of, of Game Pass to come and, and, come and join us and, and experience Total War Warhammer 3. The King of Fighters franchise kicked off in 1994, but this week, the 15th version of the game, King of Fighters 15, came out. And so we thought it was a good time to bring on someone from SNK Corporation to come and chat with us. So joining me today, I have Josh Weatherford, who's a producer at SNK. So thank you so much for joining the show. Yeah, thanks for having me. It's a pleasure. (laughs) Yeah. So, all right. So you're a, a producer at SNK. Can you just tell us a little bit about what your job entails and kind of what your contributions were to the game? Yeah. So as assistant producer, I just help the main producers mostly to oversee overall production, uh, take part in the creative process from the beginning, you know, giving, uh, different proposals for new characters or stages or system mechanics and such. Uh, I also worked a lot on the outsourcing for the uh, new rollback netcode. So working with uh, outside studios like Code Mystics and Comey Games to help us optimize and uh, improve the netcode from the previous entries and previous games we've released. Okay, nice. So like I said, the franchise has been out since 1994, and I think it's been six years since uh, King of Fighters 14. So yes. what's, it like, what's it like working on a franchise with so much history? Have you, have you been on the team long? Yeah, so I've been at SNK for about six years, but uh, so I came on right after 14 released, actually. And the first thing I worked on was some of the DLC and some of the marketing and biz dev stuff related to that. Um, But yeah, I've been a lifetime fan, obviously, especially of King of Fighters and Samurai Showdown and Metal Slug. So it's definitely been a pleasure and just an honor to work with some of the legendary developers and veterans who've been working on those games for so long. That's pretty cool. Okay, so my next question was going to be, did you play the first 14? So I guess the answer is yes. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. <laughs> Depending on the... That's awesome. So I, I did not have a lot of experience whenever I was a very young kid, but especially around the Dreamcast uh, era, there's a lot of ports that were a lot more accessible. So I played a lot during that era. Sure. All right. Yeah. Uh, but that's cool that you were able to come on to the team like right around the time that or right after the time that uh, King of Fighters 14 launched. So it's kind of like a warm up for <laughs> for this one, I think. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Um, OK, so I read that there's 39 characters plus another 12 coming in the DLC and that this is the first time that heroes from across the saga have come together. So how is that like? Is you think it's a pretty compelling first uh, single player campaign mode? Yeah, for sure. I mean, especially for people who've been fans for a long time, it's great to see so many of their favorite characters come back and interact. And we like to put a lot of the fan service there for people who, you know, really want to see these two characters interact and stuff. So there's a lot of uh, that kind of uh, Easter eggs and such hidden into the game. 
That's great. Yeah, we were uh, we were just talking, me and some of my other coworkers today, about like different fighting <laughs> fighting game characters that we like, and some of them were really far throwbacks. So it's it's cool that you guys are bringing uh, some some from over the course of the last. Uh, oh my gosh, nineteen ninety four to two thousand twenty two. What is that? Twenty years. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. um, back up. That's yeah. really cool. Um, can you tell me about the the battle system? I think there's some new improvements and changes that you guys have made. So, yeah, I mean, it's the very uh, standard three versus three KOF style team based. So uh, the biggest change this time is the uh, Shatter Strike, which is a new uh, mechanic. But yeah, uh, and also there's a lot of uh, various like system level changes, uh, giving a lot more freedom to the players. Like uh, so that's the Shatter Strike. It's a kind of a defensive move, a counter move that gets a guard point on it. So you can use it as both as a counter or a combo extender. But uh yeah, and there's a lot of other things like Max Mode Quick was uh, changed a lot from the previous game and uh, balanced a lot more. Um, and then you would have EX Special Moves. So with those, it, it gives a lot more freedom to people to play in neutral to uh, just fire off your favorite move if you have the meter. Uh, the game, I think, this time is a lot more dependent on meter management than it was previously. So it makes it a lot more interesting. It's pretty unique in the current uh, modern gaming fighting uh, landscape, cool. in my opinion. Okay. Yeah, I, I I have heard that the game has some pretty uh, pretty good online gameplay just with different like features and modes. Um, can you tell me a little bit about those? Yeah, so we did really the full mix as much as possible. So ranked, casual, uh, room match, and then even inside room match, we try to give as many options as possible to players. Um, my personal favorite, and I want to see a lot more people use it, is there's a new draft versus mode uh, that kind of a lot of times whenever you play, you know, you've played the game for two years or whatever, and it's really gotten farther along its lifestyle, you see a lot of the meta kind of like solidifies where you see a lot of the same characters. Uh, with draft versus mode, you kind of, you it's kind of a, uh, similar to MOBA style games where you can ban a character. Basically, once a character is selected, it's taken off the board. So it becomes mm -hmm. a sort of a, uh, more of a tactical strategy. I really like, okay. uh, I like that mode and I want to see people use it in tournaments and such. It yeah, that's clever. matches. And, Nice. Yeah. Yeah. I was, um, uh, yeah. I really like that one. <laughs> uh, I, I also uh, just, I looked through some of the reviews of the game and I heard that the graphics are uh, being reviewed fairly well in the stages. Uh, the stages looked pretty cool in those different, uh, the B roll that we saw just a little bit ago. Um, I'm curious, just do you have a favorite stage or are there any different features you like? Uh, yeah. I would have to say, stage for me is definitely the Metal Slug throwback one, the Sahara. That uh, <laughs> it's just too good. I've always been a Metal Slug fan, and uh, some of my favorite characters in the King of Fighters are also uh, the E Cardi fighters. So they just fit so well in that stage that it works very well. Uh, okay, nice. Um, all right, and then just I kind of have like a personal question for you. I'm just curious, how did you get into game development? I mean, obviously you're a gamer, having played a lot of these games in the past. Um, but how did you get into you know the gaming industry? Uh, yeah, so when I first uh, went through university and everything, I studied Japanese and did uh, translation and localization kind of as a focus. Um, and eventually I uh, came over and taught English for a few years. And during that time, I did freelance translation and worked at some other uh, side jobs trying to brush up on interpreting and translation. And eventually I got hired at uh, a couple of localization firms and then uh, kind of worked that way and started learning more about game design and production in general and have worked in that way as I worked on a few other titles. Uh, previously, before SNK, I was at uh, Concept. I actually worked on ReCore for the uh, Xbox One and uh, PC <laughs> as assistant producer then. So. Oh, that's funny. I was uh, I was on the PR team for ReCore a long time ago. Oh, <laughs> I know, you really? said, you yeah. said Concept. I was like, oh, wow, that's so cool. Yeah. Um, you know, honestly, I yeah, feel we, like I... <laughs> Uh, I, I was just gonna say, I feel like I, I only know a handful of people who are like Westerners, but have been able to successfully like pursue a career in like Japan or Korea or China. So that's, that's really cool that you were able to kind of, you know, learn language and then kind of become, you know, join the, the industry in Japan. That's really neat. Yeah. I mean, it was always a dream. So it's all about just doing as much as you can to make that happen. And it's yeah. always about just getting opportunities from friends and industry people and stuff. 
for sure. Very cool. Well, it's been a pleasure to have you on the show. Um, like I said, King of Fighters 15 is out this week. Uh, if folks want to stay tuned, learn more, um, there is uh, you can follow them on Twitter at SNKP official. Um, and yeah, there will be news on the DLC sometime soon. But for now, uh, check it out at launch. And thank you again so much, Josh, for joining us. Yeah, it was a pleasure. Thanks for having me. Thank you to Rebecca and to Jeff for doing the interviews. Um, hopefully Rebecca's took place. <laughs> <laughs> you gotta stop saying that you're gonna jinx it i know it'll be fine it's be way fine. too late anyway thank you for thank you guys for stepping up and doing the interviews usually uh you know we try like to spread them around we have different games and styles that we play and we're all in different well rebecca's in a you were too busy time. getting your master's degree in quantum podcasting and that's why Cubits. that's why you didn't have time for that um yeah whatever you want to say Look we got some news book. we got some news coming up i think we should probably start uh rebecca i think you we're gonna kick off our news section right yes so in celebration of the third anniversary of apex legends has it been uh, three already really... <laughs> yes it has yeah. yes it was january i want to say uh, or right. early okay. feb yeah, yeah. Go ahead. 20 20 wait was it three years yeah okay it yeah it really was years. <laughs> Obviously, I'm, I have the notes in front of me, but I'm like, wow, three years. Um, okay, sorry. So in celebration of the 30 anniversary of Apex Legends, they're releasing Defiance, uh, which is an all new season that introduces uh, nine versus nine limited time mode called Control. Um, there's also a first map update to Olympus, a new battle pass, ranked season and more. Um, and also just, you know, I think that the games community has been so like engaged and active. And so the Apex Legends folks really wanted to thank them with uh, a few more perks in celebration of the third year anniversary. So there are also three le uh, top legends that can be unlocked, three thematic packs uh, and a legendary pack for each of them just for logging in for the first three weeks of Defiance um, this new season. And uh, finally, there's also going to be a third anniversary collection event, which includes a reward track created by the community oh. for the community. Sorry, I'm watching <laughs> uh, this B-roll. <laughs> I know. <laughs> I know. It's uh, limited time squad set cosmetics and the debut of a brand new rarity level for legend cosmetics uh, with evolving prestige skins. So join the community uh, that plays Apex Legends as they celebrate Respawn's award-winning shooter experience and the community that's part of it thank you it's pretty cool well done we're gonna have to well get done. that new loba skin yeah, yeah i know I, I i i need to get back in there and dust off some of my old skins and my pathfinder skills and my blood hunda skills <laughs> yeah I, well, I think with 9v9 i think you have you know you've got a it's a good time to like get the feel for it because it's it's that different mode you're getting back into the action really quick right 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 well thank you for that rebecca jeff you got a couple of mm -hmm. items over there on your side of the fence don't busy, you busy busy week yeah, of course some, uh some xbox game pass the gift that keeps on giving the best deal in gaming just keeps getting better so uh coming soon well coming now as you just saw the interview uh warhammer total war warhammer 3 obviously it's a combination of the total war universe and the warhammer universe hence the uh the double name there but uh third one out now hope you downloaded it hope you're gonna be playing it maybe even as you're listening to this uh but a lot more so coming soon lawn mower simulator uh will be coming to console 15 year old the, uh, me is not amused <laughs> I, there is like I, we, there's like these games that it's just all about doing things that are satisfying. Like there's all kinds of things on TikTok and and uh, all sorts of social channels. Watching or doing things that are satisfying, there's just something to it. And by the way, you don't get sweaty, you don't get bit up by bugs, you don't like have to. Smell yeah, but then the I can't earn an allowance when from the nice lady down the street when I cut her front lawn. It, it's I get it though. I remember it is quite satisfying. Like you see the line of uncut grass ahead of you, and then you go perfectly over that line. And then did you, you ever cut the lawn, Rebecca? I, I, see that. I assume you. Did. I did. Yeah, I mean, and Jeff, I'm an only did. child, so I got to do all the chores. And you love to, you know. Sometimes you do the diagonals this way. Sometimes you do them that way. Sometimes you do them. This nope. way. Jeff, right? Nope, most efficient. I never, I never did it. <laughs> No, nah, I didn't. We didn't oh, have much really? of a lawn growing up in Philly. Well, um, we had like a really oh. tiny lawn and I, I don't know. We didn't do it. But uh, <laughs> shoveling, shoveling snows and then pressure washing. That's my, oh. that's, that's my version of that. That's your happy I, place. I have a pressure washer. <laughs> it's uh, like when you, same thing, you get that line of like the really clean part that you did. And then you have to call people out or you have to take a picture just so you can see. You didn't know how dirty it was. <laughs> uh, yeah, I do like a good pressure wash. Anyways, uh, also... 
coming soon, uh, or now, really, by now, uh, to Game Pass uh, is Madden NFL 22. So we just wrapped up the football season, but you can keep it going uh, through EA Play. So if you've got uh, PC Game Pass or Xbox Game Pass Ultimate, you will be able to, through EA Play, download Madden NFL 22 and keep that season going. RoboQuest is into game preview for PC. That'll be coming out uh, February 22nd. A couple games on February 24th. Galactic Civilizations 3, that's a 4X game. You know your 4X games, your civs and stuff like that. Uh, that's coming out for PC uh, through ID at Xbox February 24th. Super Mega Baseball 3 coming to console February 24th. <laughs> so obviously we're going to have MLB The Show 22 coming out Which has co-op. I, re- I was reading it has co-op. Yeah, that's one of the news. All right, well, yes. you know, we can just, we can just real quick, I just want to also- How is it co-op? Returns. <laughs> well, there's that's a really team cool. in the field and there's a team at bat. Well, that's not co-op. That's Bikes. playing against each other. Well, so co-op. Fair point. And I'm really excited about this. I have a I have a friend who actually used to play baseball, big gamer. Uh, he was a pitcher. He likes was to he pitch. Did, was he pro? I could be in the field. Yeah. You, you know him. Sean. But, oh. Uh, oh, that's right. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> anyway. So uh, he he could be pitching and I could be cho- – so if we're against a left-handed batter, then maybe I – I'm giving you signs like a, like, a, like a catcher. <laughs> Actually, I don't, you might be flashing. Okay, kind of. <laughs> Maybe, uh, Larry. Yes, exactly. I don't know. Also, I got okay. Yeah, you got it wrong. You got it wrong. It's, uh, it's very hard because it's a mirror image. Like I sh- that's pointing. No, Larry's over there. Mm. Anyway, you could play co op. Mm-hmm. We have a blog post on this on Xbox Wire, so you could theoretically even be doing like two v two or three v three. Um, you know, via the play now mode online. And I, I think that's just going to be really fun to, especially if you play with someone who's really good, you haven't played before, instead of playing against them, just getting spanked, maybe play with them and learn the ropes from them. And I think that could be really fun. Yes, Larry. That's a, that's a fastball. <laughs> this is a slider. <laughs> this is a change up. Just giving you signals. That's all. Okay. So there we go. Appreciate Thank you. it, Larry. Those are adding really the visual need those flair. For the game. Yep. Yes. Uh, uh, plus, a game that had uh, been previously announced and came out this week, actually on Valentine's Day, hearing good things from Infernax. Uh, looks uh, like a uh, it's a gory love letter to retro action classics. Kind of reminded me, just looking at it, of like maybe Castlevania one and two. Um, and I, I, those were great games. So uh, check it out. Part of Xbox Game Pass. Uh, super gross looking, by the way. So they're not joking. Uh, we talked about mm. Cyberpunk. Very exciting. Uh, Halo, the series, the TV series that's going to be on Paramount Plus uh, starting on March 24th. I got to get another Hasn't subscription service. Already. <laughs> I, you're going to want to. You're going to. Actually, Paramount Plus has a lot of good stuff. So this will be the first, I think, fiction or, you know, sort of. Uh, you know, non-sports programming um, I intend to be watching on it, but they've held like the Champions League. They get, uh, they've got a lot of really good uh, sports content there. So uh, anyway, the Halo well, series. Yeah, it's, it's CBS. Starting. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So there's actually, if, if you dig back into like the things that it, it enables you to get, there's like Star Trek, there's, there's the new stuff, but their back oh. catalog is tremendously huge. So there's I'm a lot of stuff I'm looking at it right there. now. Yeah. So anyway, it's already been renewed, Halo. Uh, for a second season, which is, you know, sounds like a good sign. I haven't gotten to see it yet. Uh, wow. Must obviously. be good. <laughs> I know. Well, I, again, all, always encouraging to hear. Well, so, it's funny because I was talking to Kiki and I were texting the other day, who Kiki from 343, who's in charge of yeah. this project, and she and I were chatting about some stuff. She said they're, they're finalizing the VFX, the visual effects, and she said she's mm-hmm. hopefully going to get me a screening in the next two weeks. So I'm excited to see. Cool. Some of it, well, look, just, at some point, I mean, ooh. you know how the TV industry works. There's usually some screeners that go ahead. So you'll be hearing uh, about how it is before it comes out. But anyway, we're about a month and a half out, March 24th. And maybe we watch together. We'll figure out a way to do that. That would be really fun. Do they own T- Does Paramount own TV land? Because that's that's a game changer if they do. Sorry, I'm looking at this. All right. Uh, last <laughs> couple of things. Uh, Dynasty Warriors 9 Empires is out now. I haven't played one of the Musu games in a while, but these were always fun. It's like your one supercharged character with like a historical basis uh, in ancient China, Three Kingdoms era. And you end up fighting your way through a castle and taking out like a thousand. Those are just fun. 
And so uh, I think I'm going to be picking this one up. And then I talked about Chorus a couple weeks ago. Oh, yeah. If you want to try it out, there is now a demo available. So uh, Demos are still a thing. Try that out. Demos are still a thing. So try it out. If you like it, uh, it is available for $39.99. Also, did you guys see... (laughs) <laughs> Did either of you guys ever play uh, Star Wars: The Old Republic, the MMO? Yeah, little, very little bit. And did very you see? Bit. Did you see the trailer that came out today for the? I think they had a new. What was it? I had it pulled up earlier. It's a new expansion. It's called Disorder. It's like a six-minute-long cinematic trailer. But I just watched it this morning. It's really cool. No, it's I have not seen that. It's kind of like a little Jedi Sith battle. It's pretty neat. I'll have to take a look at it. Did you finish? I mean, I don't want to do any spoilers. Did you you watch Boba Fett on Disney Plus? Yeah, I'm all caught up now. Oh, well, you're all finished. That's what I did on Valentine's Day. Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. I I don't want to. Yeah, it's 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 it's, there's no way to not spoil things, Larry. So, you know, I would say if you were not into Boba Fett, like, let's say you hmm, let's say you weren't into it after the first couple of episodes. Keep going is what I would say, Okay, because it. it definitely gripped me more later on in the season. Okay. Specifically starting with episode four, I want to say. Four. Wait, isn't it, is it four or five? Oh, yeah, four. Okay. Yeah, yeah. 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 Doing this more. episode four <laughs> signal. Yeah. Well, it was funny because, yeah. like, my, like, I, we, we sat down to watch as a family, and I was like, oh, this is, it picks up right where Jedi left off and finishes those stories, which uh, was very cool to me. Um, other people in my family were like, yeah, uh, Boba Fett's not cute. So, uh, I'm going to move on. And so I was watching. Wow. And then once we got, you know, once I watched episode four, um, last week, I was like, maybe you all should just like start watching this again. And, and I'm glad. Mm-hmm. Did. did you turn the family around? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, definitely. She still yeah. thinks Boba yeah. Fett is not cute. And yeah, I, I guess I agree. I mean, with he's that. not, I mean, he's, no. yeah. I don't know. Kind of a washed up bounty hunter. <laughs> <laughs> but he's got a washed up bounty hunter with a jetpack, and that that's all the right. difference right yeah I, uh, I i had this debate with a couple of friends about the armor boba fett's armor versus the mandalorian Jin, Jin, Jin Jaren versus his armor because um it's like it's like some of my friends were complaining they were like why is the production like the quality of his armor it looks so crappy like it looks really like plastic you know but i thought about it it's he's like well he doesn't Wack really like forever true <laughs> he doesn't really like worship his armor the way that the mandalorian does right yeah, like yeah. so well know. and he wasn't Just, actual he wasn't actually from mandalore i think he acquired right. those he was a clone some yeah. Other way. yeah yeah exactly yeah. so anyway he doesn't have the, he doesn't have proper Mandalorian tendencies. You know, he kind of like like Jeff said, he kind of acquired that. So he just eh, takes that helmet off at every yeah. opportunity. <laughs> I know, I know, right? <laughs> yeah, there is that. Uh, oh well. Um, hey, we've uh, one oh. of the things. Yeah, go ahead, go ahead, Rebecca. Yeah, sorry, I was gonna I was gonna skip that. Sorry, it got a little distracted with Star Wars talk. Um, should we get into the the questions and yes. the answers? And stuff. Okay, great. Yeah. Um, so for those of you, just so, what Rebecca's going to do now is if you're if you uh, listen to us on Spotify, uh, the, if you scroll down, we ask a question. You can actually respond there, and it goes back into a database, and Rebecca can can read it out. So every couple of weeks or every week when we remember to do it, uh, we'll ask a question <laughs> and we'll read them out here. So what was last? What was the last? Wasn't last week's? So was a couple of weeks ago? What was the question, Rebecca? Yeah. So it was two weeks. Oh my gosh. You know, it might have been three weeks ago because I think it was the last Time episode the I was show. on. And then yeah, the, I was we did like this. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. So we're getting to these a little bit late. But uh, three weeks ago, we asked if y'all had any tips for uh, Rainbow Six Extraction because we were playing together as a team. Yep. Not very well. <laughs> we needed so we're, Yeah. So we're just asking if anyone had any tips. Um, Let's see. So there were a few that I wanted to call out. Uh, Damien said, coordination is everything. Find a team that can communicate, which yep. I think makes a lot of sense. Because I, you know, a couple of times when I played by myself, I wasn't even using my headset, which is bad. I should no. have communicated with my yeah. team. So um, there, there is a little said, bit of a, a lightweight ping system in the game. It's not like Apex, which really has true. an amazing ping system. So it's there is an ability to do it in game. So if you don't want to have a headset, yeah. there's an option. Yeah. Um, Parker said to extract as soon as possible. Fair. Um, Sir said, know where your exit is before you need it, which I feel like, Mm, I think that's from The Walking Dead, isn't it? (laughs) That's just kind of a good... Or wait, no. 
that's that's good advice land. like almost all that's a, that's a time. life advice when you walk into yeah. anywhere and like, know how to get out <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Um, and then AAM Israel said, communicate and go slow. I think the general gist of it is talk to each other, be careful. <laughs> yeah. Uh, be kind. And, and get out when things go <laughs> yeah. bad, which yeah. I, I think we we, we kind of knew it, but we didn't execute. We knew, well. yeah, we knew it, but putting it in practice was completely different for us. So I think yeah. that's good to say. So. Thank well, you. but thank you all for your tips. Uh, yeah. I think I don't, I don't know if we're going to hop back into Rainbow Six this weekend. Maybe I kind of want to try some new stuff out on Game Pass, if I'm being honest. But um, in honor of King of Fighters 15 coming out this week, yeah. we just wanted to ask folks what their all time favorite fighting character was, just out of curiosity. Um, I don't know. What's do you yours? guys have any that come to mind? OK, uh, oh, so sure. I played a pretty good amount of Tekken on my friends. I don't even know what it was when we were in like middle school, uh, we would like come home and go play. And I actually really liked the Tekken games because they had a lot of female character options. Sure. Um, I don't know if anyone remembers that. And then they also had a lot of like Asian female character options, which I was like, Oh, that one looks like me, you know, uh, which little kids always are like, um, but so I, I really liked like Ling Xiao Yu. I remember the announcer would always say Ling Xiao Yu. Ling Xiao Yu. Um, <laughs> And then she didn't look like me, but there was also Elisa with a really Russian last name. She was the girl with like pink hair and like the metal wings. I think she was like half Android. And every now and then I'd be like button mashing and then I would like do the right combo and she'd like fly around in a circle and like these like swords right. would come out of her or something. So, um, yeah, good time. What about you, Jeff? What, what was you your favorite character? <laughs> So, uh, I, like growing up in like the arcade era, the fighting game arcade era, like as a like young teen, um, like I was very, I wasn't able to do at the time, like the Hadouken moves or the, the dragon punch. I just couldn't figure it out. So I used uh, Chun-Li cause she was super fast. And sometimes if you were good, you could really just annoy the heck out of a much better player and sometimes poach a win. Uh, later on, I got really good with Guile and, and he's, he's my go-to I think when I play. And then Mortal Kombat, uh, ro remember the robots, uh, especially they started in uh, MK3, I want to say, uh, Sector, like that was, he was my all time best. He is a robot, doesn't, I don't know if he's gendered, but, uh, but <laughs> Sector, the red robot, that, that was like the best fighting game of my career was like MK9, um, huge fan of Sector. All right. I'm gonna go. I'm gonna go a little old school. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles tournament fighters. There was a <laughs> character called Wingnut that I really liked. What? Yeah, just, wow, that's <laughs> a deep cut. I'm just saying. And then, okay. and then the Street Fighter series. I loved Honda, E Honda, because I had a Honda. <laughs> oh, well, there you go. <laughs> so I had a connection there. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna you, pull two out. Were you, were you the type of guy that would do like the the punch and yeah. then walk forward and just yeah. like push you into a wall? <laughs> exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was me, Jeff. That was me. <laughs> so anyway so yeah as, as rebecca said uh, those that's what ours is but we'd love to know what yours is so if you listen uh, on spotify when you're listening to the show or watching it just scroll down and you'll see the question pop up there we can show a few of them i can i go in once in a while we can i think i can pin up to three or four of them so if you don't see it there it's not that we didn't approve it, it's just maybe we ran out of room but we will see it and on a future show we'll call out so thank you very much for that what who is your favorite? Good question. Good fighting question. question. Great question there. All right, Kang. Anything else we got before? Oh, wow. We're, we're running out of time here. I've been futzing with my lights at the top of the show. Oh, and shoot, I realize yeah. Time, yeah. <laughs> so, all right. Uh, anything before we uh, before we uh, vacate the premises? Some quantum futzing. Yes. That's it's just all part of it. It's what, you haven't <laughs> gotten to that page yet. Got to get my qubits going. So, anyway, yes. thanks for joining us, Rebecca. Welcome back to New York. Welcome back to the show, Jeff. Good to see you. And uh, I miss you too. We'll, we got to get back in person. <laughs> I know, it's been soon. too long. <laughs> we'll do it again. All right, we'll be back next week, and then we got, we'll got we talk about some programming in the future. Got a really couple, bunch of good shows coming up for you all like we always do. So we'll see you next time. Bye-bye, everybody.